In the beginning, Link is hanging out at a pond with this dude named Russell. They're having a pretty deep conversation about life, but then he has a favor to ask of you. It's his job to deliver a sword to the royal family in Hyrule Castle, but he wants Link to go in his place to deliver the sword. Link has never been outside of the town that they both live in, Ordon Village, so he wants him to go check out Hyrule and explore the world a little bit. But before Link heads out to Hyrule, they need to finish crafting the sword first, so you got a couple days until your journey. So it's back to the ranch for some work. This is Ilya. She likes to take care of Epona when Link isn't around. It seems like she's a childhood friend of Link's, but we need Epona now, so let's head over to the ranch. Once Link has finished his work with Epona, he turns in for the night and then wakes up to these three brats. This is Beth, Tallow, and Mallow. I guess there's a slingshot for sale in town, so we gotta go check that out. I guess Colin's father, Russell, left you a wooden sword. Sweet. So after we mess around with the slingshot and the sword, a monkey shows up out of nowhere. Apparently these monkeys have been causing trouble around town, so the kids go running after it. Great. It's not safe in the forest for the kids to go alone, so you have to go make sure they don't go too far. Along the trail you see Beth and Mallow, but no Tallow. As you pass through the woods, this guy gives you a free lantern so you can pass through the cave. How far did he go? What the hell? Anyhow, there's a lot of monsters here, so this can't be good. Once you're finally near the end of the path, there's this big old tree that seems to have an entryway. Oh look, it's Tallow and the monkey. What's going on here? I guess they got kidnapped by a bunch of moblins, so you gotta kill them all and free them. Good thing we got that sword. Once you're done here, you and Tallow head back to Ordon Village. Supposedly the monkey was trying to protect him when the moblins showed up. I guess the monkey is actually a pretty nice person. Since all that's good and done, now we can finally go on our journey. But first we have to finish our day at work. Yay! Once you're done with your work for the day, Ilya and the mayor of the town, which is her father, come and talk to you and wish you the best of luck on your journey. It's a nice little sending off chat, until Ilya realizes that Epona is all scratched up. She gets super pissed at Link for pushing her too hard, and then she takes Epona off to the springs again. You and Colin head to talk to Ilya to get the horse back, but Tello and Mallow won't let you guys pass until you let them borrow that sword. Fine, you can borrow the sword. You need Epona to get to Hyrule with your delivery, but Ilya's being all stingy and won't let you in the gate, so you have to crawl into this little hole to get to the springs. Once you're inside, it seems that Colin has cleared things up with Ilya for you. You guys have been keeping Talos' capture a secret, so she didn't even know about it. So she apologizes to you. But at least now Epona is all cleaned up and ready to go on the journey. But then... Link's friends are captured and taken away. He goes to follow them, but then he's faced with the wall of darkness. He gets sucked in and some weird monster has him. But some divine energy seems to protect him. And then he turns into a wolf. He goes unconscious and then it gets dragged away. When Link wakes up, he finds himself locked up in prison. There's really nowhere to go because the chain just holds you in place. Then you're greeted by this little imp girl. She just taunts Link and makes him look stupid, but then she decides to help you out. In all honesty though, Link is in an unknown world, in a place where it seems nobody else wants to help, so he better take any help he can get. Since she helped you out, you pretty much have to do everything she says from now on. Yay. So you make your way through the sewers, fighting little monsters and observing the spirits of soldiers. Then you finally start climbing up this tower and you get to the top of some castle. The sky is dark and glowing yellow, and the little imp refers to it as the sky of the twilight. She also says she needs to introduce you to somebody. Who the hell can that be? So you travel across the top of the castle and you climb into a window through another tower. And then you finally meet the person that she wants to introduce you to. We also learn here that the imp girl's name is Midna. Midna has this mystery lady explain to you everything that's going on right now. Apparently the kingdom of Hyrule was recently under attack by the king of the twilight world. It seems his power was overwhelming so Zelda had no choice but to forfeit. This gives the King of Darkness the ability to cast a Shroud of Twilight over the uncontested lands of Hyrule. 
That means that the evil monsters led by the King of Darkness can now jump into the light world and terrorize all of Hyrule's citizens. She finally takes her hood off and oh, it's Zelda. It seems like she's either being held prisoner here or she's just standing her ground because she doesn't want to abandon her people. Either way, a guard is coming so you gotta get the hell out of there. Now Link and Midna are back on top of the castle. What are we supposed to do now? Midna reminds Link of something that he may have forgotten about with all this crazy crap going on. His friends are still missing. Now Midna says she'd be willing to help him get his friends back, but he has to be her servant for longer. So she teleports you back to Ordon Village. The only thing is, you're still stuck in your wolf form. Right now Midna wants you to get a sword and shield for her. Why her though? So you have to sneak into town at nighttime and steal a sword and shield. Since you're in wolf form, you can actually talk to the animals in town, and they'll give you hints as to how to go about this. Anyhow, now that you have your sword and shield, let's head back to the forest. It's still covered in twilight, so it's going to be a lot different than before. But on the way to the forest, you hear a voice coming from the springs. Let's go check it out. Oh, you get ambushed by one of the shadow beasts. But once you defeat it, out comes the light spirit, Ordana. So Ordana is one of four light spirits. Each light spirit protects a different province. But the problem is, Twilight has overtaken much of the land, so it's up to Link to travel to each province and revive each of the light spirits to purify the lands. Why does it gotta be me? Anyhow, according to Ordana, he says that if you revive the light spirit in Farron Woods, where we were heading to anyways, you'll be able to become a human again. So now we can finally go to Farron Woods for real this time. Now we start Midna's next little request. She says in return for her helping you, you have to help her collect some things. But for now we gotta go revive the light spirit. To revive each of the light spirits, you have to get the vessel of light and fill it with the tears of light, which are gotten by killing these bugs. Once you've filled the vessel of light, you can return to the springs and you can revive the light spirit, Farron. According to Farron, the fact that you were changed into the blue-eyed wolf is actually a sign that you were the chosen hero. In fact, you're even wearing the tunic of the hero now. Who would have guessed? Before the light spirit leaves, he tells you of a dark power that's been locked away deep within the forest temple. I guess that means we're going to start our first temple soon. But what about my friends? I guess Midna was going to drag you into that temple anyways. When you finally make it to the forest temple, you burn the cobwebs and walk on in. Hey, it's that monkey that got kidnapped with Tello. The monkey wants your help here. It turns out all of her monkey friends have been captured. Throughout the temple, you have to free a bunch of monkeys, and they'll help you get past long gaps. The monkey leader seems to be possessed by some parasite, so you gotta whoop his ass and take his boomerang. At the end of the dungeon, you have to face this creepy bastard named Diababa. Oh look, the monkey leader is back, and he's helping us fight the boss. Once you defeat the boss, it breaks up into these black shards and materializes into this strange piece. This is one of the things that Midna wanted you to get. She calls it a fused shadow. It seems the other two light spirits know where to find the other remaining pieces. She says she'll tell you more about them once you take her to collect the other two pieces. Great. But now what? Where are my friends? What do we do now? After Midna teleports you guys out of the temple, you get a message from Farron. He hints to you to head east, and you'll find the ones that you seek. Maybe that's where the kids are. Well, I guess we gotta head east over to Elden. Just like Farron, Elden is covered in twilight. It turns you into a wolf again the moment you get pulled into the barrier. But if we find Elden and purify the lands, we'll be human again. So we make our way over to the Elden Light Spirit. Now we gotta catch more of them damn bugs. According to the Light Spirit, the next few shadow is up the volcano where the mountain dwellers live, deep within their sacred grounds. Their sacred grounds are corrupted by evil, so they're probably not too happy about that. So I guess that's our next temple. But before that... Hey look, it's the kids! How the hell did you get here? So it seems that the dark beasts had captured these kids, and eventually just left them to die. But then the shaman of Kakariko village, Renato, found them. The kids weren't doing too well, so Renato brought them back to Kakariko to help nurse them back to good health. It seems that all the kids are fine, but where's Ilya? She's not here. But for now, it's at least good that the young kids are safe. Renato says that things are starting to get kind of crazy in Kakariko. Dark beasts have been attacking, 
and also the mountain dwellers on top of the volcano, the Gorons, have been very aggressive towards the humans lately. They used to be really good friends, but now they won't let the humans into the mines and are very forceful in defending their land. That's kind of weird. The kids beg of Link to find a solution to help clear things up between the Gorons and Kakariko village, and seeing that we have to go through the Gorons to get to the next few shadow for our friendly little imp Midna, we might as well see what we can do. As we make our way up Death Mountain, we get knocked flat on our ass by this Goron. We're not getting past him anytime soon. Renato sees this happen, and he tells you that there isn't much that you can do. But there is one human that managed to earn the graces of the Gorons, and that man happens to be Bo, also known as the Mayor of Ordon Village. Holy crap, it's Epona! Perfect timing. So after we finally calm Epona down, we head on back to our hometown. Once you make it to Ordon Village, the mayor is very happy to see you. He quickly pulls you into his house and you fill him in on the situation with the kids. He's really happy to hear that the children are all with Renato, that's his old friend after all, but he's pretty sad that his daughter is still missing. Don't worry bro, we'll find her. But we have other things to talk about right now. How do we beat the Gorons? Well, it turns out the Gorons like to sumo wrestle. Bo gives you some lessons on how to effectively toss your opponents around, but then he lets you in on the secret. The secret is the iron boots. Now those Gorons won't be able to toss you around. So now that we have the iron boots, it's time to head back to Kakariko and up Death Mountain. But then this happens. The Boblin King from earlier comes through Kakariko with a raid. Tallow runs away, but Beth is frozen in fear. He's about to snatch her up, but Colin runs in and pushes her out of the way. But now he's kidnapped. Link is just too late, so he has to chase them down and save Colin. You have to do this horseback fight until the Boblin King finally retreats to a bridge, and then you have to have an epic duel. Colin seems to be doing well, and the other kids seem to have a newfound respect for him. So everything ended up working out in the end, so that's good. Anyways, we got some Gorons to deal with. Get out of here, you bastard! This big old volcanic rock falls right out of the sky and almost hits you. Even Midna's kind of shocked by it. Once you make it to the top of the mountain, you face off with a bunch of Gorons. Holy crap! Luckily, one of the Goron elders stops them, and he actually lets you speak. The elder's name is Gor Koron. He's currently taking lead over the Goron tribe in Patriarch Darvis's place. It seems with all the craziness in the world, things aren't going too well for them either. Unfortunately, even after passing through all the Gorons in Death Mountain, he still doesn't allow you entry into the mines. The mines must be the sacred grounds that Elden was referring to. Link isn't given up just yet though. The Elder seems to be impressed by Link's resolve, so he gives him the chance to prove himself. Yup, that's right, it's time to sumo wrestle. We can finally put those iron boots to use. Once you've pushed the Elder out of the ring, you've gained the trust of the Goron tribe. The Elder seems to see unrelenting resolve in Link's eyes. He believes that Link can save the Goron mines. It seems that the mines suddenly started erupting aggressively and continuously, so the Elders and the Patriarch went inside to investigate. They went inside to check on the treasure that was presented to them by the Light Spirit Elden. This is probably the Fused Shadow. It's their job to protect the treasure from evil hands. But Darbus reached out and touched it, but all of a sudden he collapsed, and then he turned into a giant monster. He went on a wild rampage and the Elders had no choice but to seal him deep within the temple. Once you make it to the end, it's time to face Phyrus. Once you've beaten him, you collect your second Fuse Shadow. I mean, Midna collects her second Fuse Shadow. Since you've been such a good little servant, Midna decides to tell you a story. She tells you about a man named Zant. Zant is the self-proclaimed King of Darkness, and he's also the one who supposedly casted this Shroud of Shadows over all of Hyrule. Midna says that you have no chance in a fight against him in your current state. She refuses to accept Zant as her king. Well, we're done here, so let's get out of these mines. Holy crap, is that Darbus? Upon exiting the mines, we get a message from Elden. He tells us to head north, to the lands of Lanayru. I guess that's the next spirit that we have to cleanse. The kids are gonna stay here in Kakariko, but for now, we got business to take care of. So off we head to Lanayru. Once we're met with another barrier of twilight, Midna lets us in yet again and now we're a wolf. 
As we make our way down the trail, you get a perfect view of Hyrule Castle. Are we finally going to the big city? Hell yeah, we are. Once you get into town, it's not very lively. Everybody is just a spirit, so there isn't really much for us to do other than find Ilya. So we make our way into Telma's bar when we find Ilya. There she is. Unfortunately though, when we're in the Twilight Realm, she can't see us. She's with some Zora boy. I guess he's really sick though. Anyhow, it seems that the people in the back are having a conversation related to this Zora, so we go inspect it. The map on the table next to them shows you exactly where to go to find Laneru's Light Spirit. So that's where we're heading next. On your way to the point suggested on the map, you get ambushed by these two Shadow Boblins. They light the bridge on fire, so you're trapped. Where do you go? So you jump down into the lake. Well, what's left of the lake. You see a few spirits of Zoras. After you eavesdrop a little bit, you quickly figure out that the Zoras have their own problems too. The water coming from Zora's domain has completely stopped, so now Lake Hylia is pretty much a dried up puddle. With the help of a shadow bird, you can fly up the mountain and try to find out what's going on in Zora's domain. It's starting to get cold. What could be going on up there? So you follow the ice, and then you finally find Zora's domain, and wow, it's completely frozen over. But where are all the Zoras? So you painstakingly climb up the ice and find... Yeah, they're all completely frozen solid. This can't be good. So Minda's solution to melt all this ice is... That big ol' volcanic rock. Let's just teleport it over and see what happens. That seemed like a catastrophe. But they all seem to have survived. They're a little messed up, but they all seem to be doing okay. As you make your way out of Zora's domain, you hear a voice. Right before you rise, you see the ghost of the Queen of the Zoras. Yes, the ghost. Her name is Rutella. Unfortunately, the Dark Ones raided Zora's domains and executed her right in front of her people just to send the Zoras a message. But telling you that isn't her purpose of being here. She wanted to thank you guys for melting all the ice and freeing the Zora people. Queen Rutella just has one thing to ask of you. She wants you to save her son, Prince Rallus. Isn't that the same Zora that was with Ilya earlier? When the Dark Beast attacked Zora's domain, she had sent the prince to Hyrule Castle to warn Zelda about what's going on. She fears that some monsters may have followed in his path, putting him in danger. So she wants you to rescue him. The queen says she would risk her own neck to save her son, but she's already dead, so she can't. But she promises you a treasure that will allow you to swim just like the Zoras do if you can save her son. I guess we can see what we can do. You can't say no to a mother's last wish. But we can't really do much with this whole area covered in twilight, so we gotta go find the light spirit. So now we gotta kill more bugs and collect the tears of light. Yay. Once you finally slay this giant bug, we get to meet the last light spirit, Laneru. Laneru tells you this story with this creepy cutscene. At one point in time, all was chaos until the goddesses descended from the heavens. They gave order and life to the land, and divided all power equally. The lands that they bless have come to be known as the Sacred Realm. The people who resided in these lands lived peaceful lives for a very long time. That is, until people started to get greedy. Battles began to ensue, led by very powerful magic users, and they were nearly successful in establishing dominion over the lands. That is, until the goddesses ordered the three spirits to seal away these magic users forever. The magic that these sorcerers used is actually the power that's found in the few shadows. In other words, he's warning you. He hopes you make the right decisions with the power that you find. At the end of the day, he tells us that the dark power is at the bottom of the lake bed of Lake Hylia. So the temple is in the bottom of the lake bed. Sure, we can get down there with the iron boots, but we can't really breathe underwater. That's a problem. Anyhow, we're human now. Why don't we go to Hyrule Castle and check up on the Zora Prince? We did make a promise to his mother after all. We can also go check on Ilya. As you're walking into Telma's bar, you hear some loud commotion. The doctor is yelling about not wanting to help a Zora kid, he only works on humans, and then he bumps right into you and gives you some ugly ass snarl. Well screw you then, old fart. 
At that very moment, you notice Ilya. She looks you right in the eyes, but then she just walks away. That's strange. She seems pretty dead set on saving this Zora boy. She probably doesn't even know who he is. In fact, she doesn't even know who she is. According to Selma, she's actually suffering from amnesia. She has no idea who Link is. Thelma seems to understand though that Link and Ilya know each other. But we still have a sick Zora prince on our hands, so what do we do? Thelma suggests that we head over to the Shaman in Kakariko. That's our boy Renato. With all these ravaged lands, it seems everybody's too afraid to help Ilya and Thelma out. So now it's up to Link. So you have to escort Ilya, Thelma, and Prince Relis on their little horse carriage until you get to Kakariko. There's the Boblin King again. Get wrecked, bro. These Boblins are set on capturing the Zora Prince, so you have to do everything you can to protect the carriage. Finally, you make it to Kakariko, and the Zora Prince is now in the Shaman's care. Renato says that Prince Rallus has made it through the worst of it, so now he just needs the rest. The poor kid is calling out for his mother in his dreams. He may not even be aware of her passing. In the meantime though, Toma invites you to visit her bar. I guess she's part of this sort of league of heroes that serve Hyrule. They may be good resources on our quest, so maybe we should go check that out. Once everybody has left, there she is again. The ghost of Queen Rutella. I guess she wants us to follow her? This is kind of creepy. So you follow her into the Kakariko graveyard. She leads you to a hidden grave towards the back. Apparently this is where King Zora rests. I guess Kakariko village is sacred to the Zoras, so Link was right to bring the prince here. And now the treasure that she promised. The Zora armor. Now we can finally get into the lake bed temple. Rest in peace, Ritella. It's off to Lake Hylia. So you swim on down to the lake bed temple, and you blow up the entrance with the water bombs. Luckily though, if you forgot to buy bombs, this Zora will sell you some right outside of the temple. Once you've made it deep enough into the temple, you get the claw shot. Hell yeah. Finally, once you make it to the boss room, you have to face the underwater giant, Morpheal. Now that you've finished the fight, you have all the few shadows. So, what do we do now? I guess Midna wants to use the few shadows to prove that Xant has false power. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Or not. What the hell is this asshole doing here? Zant's still trying to pose as the King of Shadows, but Midna won't have that. She accuses him of abusing the Twilight Trap's magic, but he scoffs at that. Apparently he isn't using the Twilight magic. His magic was a gift from his god. He tries to guilt trip Midna into joining him in his cause, saying that the Light People are the ones who oppress the Shadows. But she refuses, but he doesn't like that very much, so he attempts to murder Midna. But then this happens. The light spirit of Lanayru broke free of the twilight just in time to teleport you and Midna to safety. The light spirit then tells you to seek out Zelda. But Midna isn't really doing too well at the moment. So hopefully Zelda can help. Once you get to Zelda, Midna does something a little unexpected. Instead of asking for Zelda's help, she disregards her own well-being. She pleads to Zelda to remove the curse that turned you into a wolf again. She believes that Link is the one that can save the Light Realm. 
seems that Midna is really starting to care about the light world. Unfortunately, Zelda is not able to cure this magic. The magic that turned Link into a wolf this time is different than the Twilight magic. Zelda tells Link to go deep within Farron and find the Master Sword. It's located in this sacred grove. Midna is too weak to go with you, so she asks you to go on your own. Midna has one final request for Zelda. She wants Zelda to show Link where the Mirror of the Twilight is. She's too weak and doesn't have enough time to find the Mirror with Link. At this moment, Zelda seems to realize something about Midna. And then she does this. As you and Midna are leaving, a huge barrier appears and covers Hyrule Castle. So now it's time for Link and Midna to head to Farron Woods and find that Master Sword. The Master Sword is a powerful blade that can cut through the shadows, so that should be pretty helpful. Once you make it to the Sacred Grove, you're greeted by the Skull Kid with a trumpet. Every time he plays it, a bunch of puppet things come out and attack us. They're creepy as hell. Yo, screw off, bro! Now that you've made it through that maze-like forest, you find these two big statues. You have to do this big puzzle thing. Honestly, it's pretty tricky, but once you finish it, you get permission to pass. There it is. Now you have the Master Sword. This is the little stone that Zant used to cast a curse on you that turned you into a wolf. Now that Midna has it, we can actually use this to turn Link into a wolf whenever he wants now. But then Midna goes into sweet talking mode and asks Link for another favor. Fine, what do you want this time? She wants Link's help to find the Mirror of the Twilight because it might be our greatest hope against Zant. Since we're not really sure where the mirror is, maybe we should go to Telma's bar and ask around. After you're greeted by Telma, she actually gets to introduce you to that League of Heroes she was talking about. This is Shad, he's the scholar of the group. This one is Ashe. She was trained in the mountains by her father to be a warrior. And finally, we got Russell. So you mean to tell me that while your son was kidnapped two times now, you've just been sitting here drinking booze with your buddies at the bar? You lazy bastard. Anyhow, I guess there's actually a fourth member of the group. They say he's investigating something going on in the western desert, and Link should probably go check it out. So that's where we go next. So you find the old man at Lake Hylia, his name is Aru, so he gives you a little history about the Girudu Desert. There's a prison there, in which anybody who was sentenced there would be sent directly to the underworld by a supposed cursed mirror. Hey, maybe that's the Mirror of Twilight. So he hooks us up with this cannon ride and off we go to Girudu Desert. Upon entering the desert, Midna stops us. I guess she wants to tell Link a very important story. She brings up that story that the spirit guardian Laneru was talking about. Specifically the part where the magic wielders tried to take over the sacred realm. The sorcerers that were sealed away were actually banished. They were sent to a dark and dreary realm, the place we know as the Twilight Realm. The people that inhabit this world were turned into shadows that can never return to the sacred realm. The shadow people are known as the Twi'li. Midna is actually a descendant 
of the Twilight tribe that was banished there long ago. According to Midna, the realm of the Twilight was actually once a very peaceful place. That is, until Zant came along. Using some strange new power that the Twilight have never seen before, he was able to quickly take over the realm. He turned all the Twilight inhabitants into shadow beasts, and in a weird way he banished Midna from the Twilight Realm. So the only way for Midna to get back to the Twilight Realm is through the Mirror of Twilight. And that's when she asks for Link's help. So you make your way up to the Girudu prison that Aru was talking about, and you find that it's infested with Bulblins. As you fight your way through, you accidentally lock yourself in a prison. How awesome. You're locked in with this giant swine. Then in comes the Bulblin King. After you smack him around a little bit, he runs out, and then he lights the whole place on fire. We gotta get the hell out of here. So you hop on that giant swine and bust out. And that leads you right to the next temple, the Arbiter's Grounds. Once you finally made it to the boss room, you have to face off with Stallord, the Lord of the Stalfos. Once you've beaten him, you can head out to the back and go up to the top of the Arbiter Grounds. After you activate this tower, it brings up this huge stone thing. And then you find the Mirror of Twilight. Or not. Shortly afterwards, a bunch of these mystic looking guys pop up. I guess this is the Six Sages. Apparently the magic that fragmented the mirror was none other than Ganondorf's magic. I guess in recent years, Ganondorf was trying to take over the Sacred Realm just like the magic users from the past. The only difference this time though, is that Ganondorf also possesses the power of the goddesses, just like Link and Zelda. So the sages were trying to execute Ganondorf, but he has an insane amount of power and was able to fight back. He even managed to kill the Sage of Water. In a last resort effort, the sages ended up sealing Ganondorf to the Twilight Realm instead of executing him. In a way, the sages kind of just dumped the Light World's problems right into the Twilight Realm. It's pretty clear that Zant somehow got his magic from Ganondorf. The point is, is we somehow have to fix the Mirror of the Twilight. We need it fixed so we can get to the Twilight World and dethrone Zant. Apparently, only the true ruler of the Twilight Realm can destroy the Mirror permanently. Since it's only fragmented, that just further proves that Zant is not the true ruler. According to the Sages, the fragments are actually hidden around Hyrule, one is in Snowy Mountain Heights, another is in the Ancient Grove, and the last is in the Heavens. How the hell do we get to the Heavens? Anyhow, that's Link's new quest, to find the three mirror fragments. So first, we decide to head on to the Snowy Mountains. The entrance to the mountains is right next to Zora's Domain. Once we get there, who the hell? Oh, it's Ashe. According to her, the mountain seems really suspicious, and the Zoras reported that some monster has been sneaking into town and catching fish. She gives you a sketch of the monster holding one of those fish. Maybe we should show it to some of the Zoras. So here's what I found out from the locals. The red fish in the sketch is called a reek fish because of its weird smell. And you can find these fish by Mother and Child Isle in Zora's Domain. I went to go try to catch these fish, but they just don't bite. I even asked the lady who runs the fishing hole and she doesn't know anything. Oh, Prince Rallis knows how to catch him. Guess we're heading back to Kakariko Village. Once you get to Kakariko, the prince is nowhere to be found. You find Renato's daughter, Ruda, and she says that the prince is doing fine, but he's always at that shrine in the graveyard praying. Poor little dude. When you get to him, he actually recognizes you. I guess his mother was actually appearing in his dreams, and she told him about you. He knows that you're the one who saved Zora's domain, so he wants to do anything he can to help you. So you show him Ashe's sketch, and he gives you one of his earrings. I guess his earring is made out of the same type of coral that those reekfish feed on, so it'll make a perfect lure. Once you catch the fish, you unlock a new scent, and this will lead you through the mountains to where the snow monster lives. Once you finally get to the monster, wow, he's huge, but he's actually really nice. 
When you tell him about the mirror, he says he actually found one. He has it at his house and even offers to cook you a meal. So you snowboard over to his place, and wow, that's one impressive house. I guess he lives in the Snow Peak ruins. So believe it or not, this is actually the fifth temple. You meet the Yeti's wife. Her name is Yetta and his name is Yeto. Yeto told her about you, so she knows that you're there to see the mirror. She says it's really pretty, but ever since she's seen it, she got really sick and monsters started popping up all over the house, so they locked it away on the top of the mansion. Throughout this dungeon, she gives you locations to where she thinks the key to the mirror is, but they turned out to just be ingredients for the soup. Once you get the key to the master bedroom, where the mirror's locked away, Yetta takes you in to show you the mirror. She gazes into the mirror and gets infatuated by its glory. She can't take her eyes off of it until finally... Holy crap! She gets possessed just like Darbus did and turns into Blizzetta. So we have to knock some sense into her. After you beat her, she kind of just lays there. Even Midna feels bad about the way we treated her. But then... Yeah, I think she's gonna be fine. So now we have one out of three pieces of the mirror. To be honest, at this point I wasn't exactly sure what to do next. I mean, yeah, we can go to Telma's bar and get hints as to where to go, but before that, let's take a stroll around town. We haven't really explored it much. This is that barrier that formed around the castle. Yeah, you can't really get past. You can do this minigame with this weird-ass dude in what looks like a carnival tent. Here we have this fortune teller's place. Her name is Faniti. Basically, she gives you hints as to where some of the collectibles are, like the pose. Yeah, the pose. In the Midna's Lament quest, you end up passing through this dark room with this greedy guy who sold his soul for money. His name is Giovanni, and his pet cat Gengle is actually frozen on his head. The other cats in town are also worried about Gengle, they haven't seen him in ages. He must have been frozen there for a while. He's under some curse, and the only way to cure him is to kill Poe's and collect their souls. There's 60 in the game total, but you get little rewards here and there as you get more and more. Gengle actually gets unfrozen after 20. Speaking of collectibles, there's also all these golden bugs flying around. I think there's 24 in total. Take them to this girl, Agatha, and she'll give you a bunch of money for them. I guess she wants male and female bugs of each species so that she can have her perfect little insect ball. Good luck finding them all. Okay, enough dilly-dallying around town. Let's go get these damn mirror shards. So our next destination is the Ancient Grove. And according to the folks at Telma's Bar, Russell's already scoping out the Sacred Grove. Oh no, not that place again. So we fly our golden chicken on over. I wonder what this chicken has to say. Oh. Anyhow, in the Sacred Grove, we have a fun little time with our Skull Kid friend, and we fight our way through this forest maze till we're back to where we found the Master Sword. By placing the sword back in its original spot, it reveals a doorway. And this doorway leads to a past version of the Temple of Time. The boss we have to face this time is Armagoma, a giant eyeball spider. And now we have our second mirror shard, just one more to go. Once you beat the dungeon, you're greeted by this Okoko, or bald chicken thing. I guess supposedly the Okokos come from the land in the skies. This Okoko just wants to get back home, but apparently it needs the power of the Dominion Rod to get home. The Dominion Rod is the item that we just got in this dungeon. But after leaving the past version of Temple of Time, the Dominion Rod doesn't work anymore. That's weird. Let's go see if anybody at the bar knows what to do. When you talk to Telma, she asks you about Ilya and says you should probably pop into Kakariko and just check up on things. Alright, let's see how she's doing. Once you get there, wait, how the hell did Darbus get inside of here? So you talk to Renato and it appears that he actually has some good news. Shad is actually downstairs in the basement and he's researching the heavens, which is convenient because Ilya seems to remember something about the Rod of the Heavens. You mean this rod? Sorry bro, it doesn't work. According to some of the manuscripts he's read about this statue down here, there seems to be a passage that says, Awaken us with the word to break the seal. 
Well, seeing that we don't really know what the words are, I guess all we can really do is help retrace Ilya's memory, since she's the only one who seems to know anything about the Rod of the Heavens. So Renato gives us a letter, and we're going to start retracing back to when Ilya was with Telma at the bar. Apparently that old ass doctor from earlier was the one who brought Ilya here in the first place, so Telma gives us this magic piece of paper as leverage against the doctor. Once he sees it, by the way it's an invoice of the tab he owes the bar, he freaks out and caves in, but then he mentions some wooden statue. Yeah, I guess he stole this wooden statue from Ilya and was gonna sell it. What an asshole. I guess he doesn't have the statue anymore though. What happened was he spilled a bunch of medicine on it, so we put it outside to dry and then somebody stole it. Great. So we catch the scent of the medicine from the back corner of his office and we go and track it down. We have to wait outside of town till nighttime, and then the thieves will pop up and we can get that statue. Oh hey look, it's Agatha! So it's finally dark and then you get ambushed by a bunch of these skeleton dog things. Once you beat them all, the wooden statue just pops up. So let's go ahead and bring this thing back to Ilya. Once you bring it back to her, she actually has memories of when she was kidnapped by the Bulblins. They kept her imprisoned with this other person. I guess the person she was imprisoned with helped Ilya escape, but they're still stuck in the prison. That's not good, so we gotta go rescue them. Ilya doesn't remember where this place is, but Gorkoron actually recognizes this statue. There is a tribe that used to protect the royal family a long time ago. They lived in this secret village, but the tribe no longer exists, what with all the passing wars. But according to Ilya, the passage was covered with rocks. Luckily we got Darbus, he'll move them rocks super fast. Once you get there, Darbus is already hard at work. Now we got a bunch of Boblins to slay, western style. Once they're all gone, this old lady comes out of this shack. Her name is Impaz. She was actually named after the person who founded this town. She actually knows who Link is. Ilya was talking about you a lot, saying that Link would come and save her. Unfortunately though, according to some royal order from their tribe, she has to stay in the town until a certain person arrives. But I guess when she helped Ilya escape, Ilya left something behind. This is Ilya's charm. Hopefully it's the key to get her memory back. To put it simply, yeah, it worked. After Link and Ilya's little lubby-dubby conversation, Ilya brings up the Rod of the Heavens again. More specifically, she remembers the old lady that she was imprisoned with telling her that she's there waiting for the Messenger of the Heavens. The Messenger of the Heavens will show up with the Rod, and the lady is supposed to give him something. Well, seeing that we have a Rod, looks like we gotta go back to this old lady. Once you get back to the hidden village, you see that there's tons of cats here now. So we go back and talk to the crazy cat lady Impaz, and we show her the Dominion Rod. Now she can finally be free and leave this town when she feels ready. But more importantly, she gives us the ancient sky book, so we have to go find a really smart scholar who might be able to read it. I wonder who should we talk to? The monkey! <coughs> Just kidding, it's Shad. So apparently when he recites the words in this book, it'll activate this statue and it might do something. So he gives it his best shot, and it doesn't work. So there's a bunch of more statues a lot like this all over the map. So he marks all the locations on your map, and he goes off to try the words out on the other statues. Now, the words may not have worked on the statue, but it did work on the Dominion Rod. So now we can use our Dominion Rod again. The Dominion Rod doesn't work on this particular statue though. So, I guess we might as well just go check all the other statues that he marked. So as you check all these statues that are scattered all over Hyrule, it adds missing parts to the ancient skybook that the old lady gave you earlier. Once you get all the missing parts, you can finally activate this statue. There's a secret stairway behind this statue. And would you look at that. This thing needs some work. According to Shad, this is the Sky Cannon. I guess you can actually use this thing to get to the Sky City. So maybe we'll finally be able to get to the heavens. So we need to take this to some sort of cannon expert. And I only know of one. So you ask Midna to warp it away and Shad is just kind of here. So you and Midna send his ass packing. And then off we go to the cannon expert. Yup, it's that same clown from earlier. Seeing that he's a cannon connoisseur, he can't help but want to fix it. But he gets it done super quick, so no complaints here. So now after all that hard work, we could finally blast off to the heavens. 
Let's find that mirror shard. At the end of the dungeon, you're faced with the Twilight Dragon, Argabrock. And now we finally have the last mirror shard. It's time to go put this thing back together. Midna seems to get very emotional at the sight of the Twilight Gate. She believes that it's a very beautiful and peaceful place. But that all changed when that dark magic was released into the Twilight World. And that's when the Sages pop up. They apologize to her for sealing Ganondorf and his dark magic in the Twilight Realm. And they also reveal Midna's secret. That she's the original ruler of the Twilight Realm. The Twilight Princess. Zant uses this new dark magic to take over the throne. He puts a curse on Midna that not only turns her into this imp-like state, it also greatly weakens her own magic. And then he banishes Midna from the Twilight Realm. The Twilight Tribe believes that the hero would arrive as a divine beast. Midna saw this as an opportunity to use Link. She only had intentions to restore the Twilight Realm to normal. She literally didn't care about the Light Realm at all. But things have changed. After seeing all the sacrifice and selfless acts that Zelda and Link have gone through, she knows that deep down in her heart that she has to do what she can to save the light world as well as her own world. If you guys can beat Zant, the curse on her will be lifted, and she even thinks that she'll be able to bring Zelda back. Anyhow, it's time to get through this portal and kick Zant's ass. Here's some of Midna's people. They're under the control of Zant's dark magic, which is why they look like the Shadow Beasts. They don't normally look like this, and they're actually harmless, so we gotta do what we can to save them. Once you make it to Zant, he's not too happy. In fact, he gives you some insight as to why he's chosen to usurp the throne. They were once a tribe of powerful magic users, but over time, under the royal family's rule, Midna's family, things were really just calm and peaceful. Hatred and anger were basically not even a thing. Zant really didn't like this. In fact, it seems like he was just bored of it. He was actually a servant in the royal house. The only reason he stuck around was to at some point try to gain the throne, but he just didn't have the magic capabilities to do so. And then that's when Ganondorf discovers him. Ganondorf gives his magic to Zant, on the one condition that Zant do everything in his power to create darkness among the light and twilight realms. It doesn't matter anymore though, cause we're here to stop this fool. The fight with Zant is actually one of the most interesting fights in the game. You're constantly teleporting to rooms where you fought bosses in the past. Once you beat Zant, you finally get those few shadows that you painstakingly collected back. Zant starts to freak out. He starts saying weird crap. He says the curse on Midna will never be broken because Ganondorf was actually the one who casted it, not Zant. And he says that Ganondorf is now reborn back into the world and he's in Hyrule right as they're speaking. This pisses Midna off pretty bad. She ends up using the power from the few shadows to kill that weirdo. This actually kind of shocks her. It's so much more power than she thought. And she only just used a small portion of it. She might not have her power back, but since she has the power of the few shadows, she can give Zelda her power back. So now it's time. We gotta bring Zelda back and fight Ganondorf. 
Naturally, Ganondorf is in Hyrule Castle. We have to get inside of there. But this big old seal is still up. Luckily though, we have the few shadows. So Midna goes ahead and activates them. And she goes beast mode. It takes a lot of energy out of her, but I think she'll be fine. Now it's time to storm Hyrule Castle. Before you can actually get inside of the castle, you have to find the key to the front door. So if you head to the left side of the castle, you meet up with an old friend, the Bulblin King. Once you defeat him, this happens. Yeah, even Midna didn't see that coming. But there's no time to celebrate. We still have a whole castle to fight through. Once you get to the boss chamber, you see Zelda. She's pinned against the wall. Ganondorf talks about Midna and her ancestors. He says that their magic was petty and weak, to the same type of true power as those chosen by the gods. He feels that since he's chosen that he should be the rightful king. This pisses Midna off. Midna tries to protect Zelda, but then Ganondorf just phases right into her. That's weird. So now we have to fight <laughs> Zelda. The Zelda fight's actually pretty similar to when you fight Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time. Midna uses her dark magic to kill Ganondorf and Zelda at the same time. Just kidding. Now that we got Ganondorf out of Zelda, the real fight begins. You have to shoot him on the weak spot on his head, then attack his stomach. He starts to change up his movement, so this gets a little tricky, but eventually you'll beat him. The power that Zelda gave to Midna is finally coming back to her. The few moments of peace you all just felt blatantly interrupted by Ganondorf. Midna teleports Link and Zelda out of the castle. And then she uses all of her power for one final attack in an effort to destroy Ganondorf. Except he didn't die. Zelda uses her magic and asks the spirits for the light power to destroy the darkness. And then she asks Link for his help. This horseback fight is kind of a mess. But once you down him with Zelda's light arrows, it's time for a sword fight and kick his ass for good.
Once Ganondorf has been properly destroyed, he sees Midna. Of course he's worried about her, so he goes running off to make sure she's okay. Zelda and Link travel with Midna to see her off at the Mirror of Twilight. But this time it's a happy farewell, because as long as the Mirror of Twilight is intact, they can possibly see each other again. Right? Turns out she really is the true leader. <laughs> 